downtown Miami tonight. The Marlins and the Phillies will finish off the 2013 season series between the two. And this three-game series ends split right down the middle. Fans roll it in. Christian Yelich fish got the home whites going tonight as they take on the Fightins, the Phils. First losing season in a long time for the Phils. Brad Hand gets the ball for the fish. High for one, Rich Waltz, along with Tommy Hutton. It's the Marlins and the Phillies for the last time here in 2013. Normally, when the Marlins and the Phillies play, there's some wild stuff that goes on. The <laughs> Phillies have a powerful lineup. The Marlins in the past have had big series from John Carlos Stanton and such. But the two games in this series have been all about pitching and uh, low scoring games both. You know, when you think about it, the entire season series has not been uh, crazy like we've seen in the past, especially with a lot of the games at Citizens Bank Park. But these two games here tonight, there has not been a home run hit between either team. Uh, the Marlins were able to pick up a shutout with Evaldi's tremendous game in the first game. And then last night, it was a, a plethora of pitchers for the Phillies again. And they hung on to win another close one, two to one, another game where the Marlins score two runs or less and that has happened a lot this year. It has been a disappointing season for the Phils but as Ruben Amaro tries to restart the engine and get him going next year the one thing he feels like he has is a pretty good foundation in that rotation especially with his two lefties and we see Cole Hamels who has not had a Cole Hamels like season in terms of wins and losses but he still pitched well this year. You know when you think about it and you look at the numbers of Cole Hamels this season they kind of go along with his career numbers against the Marlins 28 career starts so the Marlins have seen him a lot 9 and 12 but a good ERA well this year against everybody else he has a record under 500 uh, he has a very respectable ERA in the threes he still has that tremendous cutter good curve excellent change up he's a tremendous competitor out there and he's won 99 career games so Cole Hamill's thinking about that number 100 tonight to finish off our Coventry Healthcare matchup. All across the landscape of baseball there are young pitchers in September get opportunities to start having pitched in the minor leagues most of the year and Brad Hand is getting one of those opportunities. I think Rich Brad Hand needs to carry over what he's done the few times he's worked out of the bullpen he's thrown pretty well. He's had command and he needs to take that command out there in a starting role tonight. Yeah he gets a, a shot at the Phils. Marlins try to win this series. Game three Phils fish. And guess what? We have a very special guest during the game who might just happen to be the National League Rookie of the Year. I'm just saying.
Marlins Park. Let's head out to center field. Craig Minervini. Jeff Conan. Hi, gents. Hey, Rich. How you doing? And good evening again, everybody. We're going to talk a little pitching here tonight. Brad Hand will get his second start of the year, obviously, final start of the season. Had a nice year and did have an injury at AAA, so didn't have a full season down there. Saw him here a couple of years ago. He's had pretty good numbers for the Marlins. And as we mentioned, he take a, a hanging breaking ball away and a three run homer in his first start against the Mets uh, earlier September. And uh, he'd have even better numbers. Yeah, he would. Uh, 15 starts in AAA this year. This is his second start in the big leagues. 14 innings pitch. He's only given up six hits. Yeah. Which is, uh, goes out to a 122 batting average against. And like you said, if it wasn't for that one home run, his ERA would be a lot lower than it is. And he's going to be in the mix, I think, for the lefty spot in that rotation next yeah, year. He's, a, he's been a good pitcher. Came up a couple years ago, had a shot. And uh, I remember talking with him yesterday about it. He said, you never know when you're going to get these chances. And, and he really wants to make a good impression. So far, he has here. This one may go a long way. Now, when you look toward next year, all right, Jeff, who's your in guys? Who's maybe just on that next level? And who's uh, kind of in the outside looking in in your mind? Well, you got to look at Alvarez, Evaldi, Fernandez, I think, are the in guys. That's three. I think Turner and Kohler have earned the chance to be the in guys. They're going to be the, okay. they're gonna be the five guys that are going in there as the starters. The other guys are going to have to knock them out in spring training. So it is going to be a competition, I think, for those four and five spots. Len struggled up here. Hand has looked pretty good. We haven't seen Haney at this level yet. The Marlins also have a couple of impressive uh, minor leaguers that uh, they got in the Blue Jays trade in DiSclafini and uh, Nicolino, who's a lefty, who had blazing numbers. And I wouldn't be surprised if they can impress Unless the Marlins use some of these guys as a chip one way or the other and make some offseason deals, which which I would think is a possibility as well. Yeah, the Marlins are very pitching rich right now in the minor leagues. Uh, obviously, the rotation, the whole staff has been outstanding for the Marlins this year, the lone bright spot. All right, we've got more coming up here. Baseball, the finale of the series. Marlins trying to win their first series of the year against the Phillies in the 19th and final matchup. It's Ryan Sandberg's club. We've got it all coming up. We'll look for you in the post game. It's brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. By AT&T Uverse TV. Check availability 1-800-PICK AT&T. Rethink possible. By Just for Men, Mustache and Beard. And by Checkers. Feast on. Inside Marlins Park, ready to go. The Fish and the Phils finish off this three-game set. Finish off the season series as well. Here come the Fightings. Brought to you by J.M. Lexus. 
Cesar Hernandez is in center field. Jimmy Rollins is at short. Chase Utley at second base. Carlos Ruiz will do the catching. Dominic Brown in left field. Darren Ruff in right. Kevin Franzen, the versatile one, is at first base. Freddie Galvis over at third, and Cole Hamels hits ninth. And that is a lineup that the 23-year-old uh, left-hander, Brad Hand, will be facing. Spent uh, most of the year in New Orleans, but since coming up, I think has shown better command that we've seen in Hand a few other times that he's been called up, uh, making just his second start here. He's been in six games. So he goes after the Phillies. Uh, he's pitched against the Phillies before, one and one in his career. One start, a couple of games. So tries to keep that command. That's always a good thing to watch with his fastball, his uh, curveball, and his changeup. Even though he got to the big leagues a couple years ago, you still forget he's a youngster. He's 23. Chaska, Minnesota. Second round pick back in 2008. And Hand goes to work on a lineup which has some switch hitters at the top with uh, Hernandez and Rollins. And then Utley hitting third. Got another lefty in the five spot. So this might be a, a good lineup to face if you're Brad Hand. Hernandez takes a rip at the first pitch fastball and fouls it back. And it's 0 1 with Ben Revere out. Hernandez getting a chance to play center field in September for the Phils. His numbers have dipped over the last week. He's not. Have a hit in this series and a floating breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 2. Yeah, Hernandez just two out of his last 20. And working quickly. And that overhand breaking ball for Hand is a real good one, especially with the fastball command. I think what's surprising with Brad Hand, he has that good changeup, but he can throw in the low 90s. He's not a a lefty that tosses it up there 85 miles an hour 94 right there with run on it. yeah he's working with Coy Hill tonight Mike Redman and the fish tapper foul a frustrating night last night for the Marlins and they've had a lot of them obviously in a year where you lose 100 games and the Marlins hit 100 last night the Marlins a 2 1 loss and for Mike Redmond in his rookie season as a manager you've touched upon it Tommy so many games in which the Marlins have scored two runs or less and there's really not a whole lot of managing you can do when that's the case to right Stanton over there and he makes the catch and finishes with a nice slide. Good job by John Carlo in right field. That ball was stung by Hernandez and had some slice on it. Stanton stays with it. You have to stay with this ball, and then as he reaches, loses his balance a little bit, but gives us a nice landing. Here's Rollins now. Rollins a couple hits in this series. The Phillies were the ones that were frustrated. On Monday night, Nathan Evaldi was terrific, seven and two thirds, and that was the Roy Halladay game, in which uh, Halladay's arm seemingly just gave out. Rollins, sharp ground ball, Polanco crossed the diamond in time, and there are two outs. Here's the defense behind Brad Hand, brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Uh, you look at the outfield, which sets up the same. I want to focus on Placido Polanco. 115 games, I think, should be in the mix and should be talked about as a gold glove at third base. He's made just two errors this year. He has won a gold glove at third. He's won a couple at second. Here's Utley now. And Hand misses down low with a fastball. Utley back and healthy. Certainly hopeful that he plays a, a large role in what the Phillies are looking for, and that's a renaissance next year. After a, a decline last year to a 500 record, sub 500 this year. If they can get Ryan Howard back and healthy, if Utley stays healthy, if they add a piece or two. Continued growth from Dominic Brown. 
Maybe a, a Cody Ashy breakthrough. That's what the Phils are hoping for. The big question mark, Roy Halladay. Do they resign him? Does he go somewhere else? Carlos Ruiz, same situation in the center. Oddly, nothing wrong with his swing, Tommy. We've seen him. <laughs> Almost a, a week worth of Utley over the last 10 days, and it seems like everything he hits has been hard. Yeah, it's safe to say the Marlins have been utley <laughs> over the uh, last week or so. Another pitcher you talk about the Phillies in their rotation, they, they may have a little concern with. He had a solid year, is Kyle Kendrick, who's I, pitched so well against the Marlins. I had a, a fine uh, chat with Kyle Kendrick as he was coming out of Hugo the Barber's location. Down here at Marlins Park. Yeah, the visiting players know where to go. Yeah, they do. And uh, he was, first of all, his haircut looked really good. Secondly, he said the shoulder feels fine. And, and as a precaution, they've shut him down, but he feels like he'll be able to do his regular offseason throwing program and be back next year. Lucas, look out. <laughs> he almost clipped Ruiz. Makes the catch in fair territory. Nice first inning by Brad Hand. On cue, one of the great parts of Marlins Park is Hugo the Barber. Juice. Yeah, the Marlins may have lost 100 games this year, but Hugo has had a terrific year. Again. Yes, he has. He was named in the All National League All-Star team, I believe, is the official barber to the All-Stars. Jan Lexis brings you the Marlins lineup. Donovan Solano, Ed Lucas, Christian Yelich, John Carlos Stanton, Justin Ruggiano, Placido Polanco, Adani Echeverria, Corey Hill, and Brad Hand. Well, there is the 29 year old left hander. It's amazing that Cole Hamill's still just 29. Six consecutive years of 30 or more starts. He's had a rough year as far as support. He's had a rough year as far as letting an inning get away from him. He actually started the season one and nine through May 31st. Solano leads it off. And Lucas Christian Yelich to follow. Donovan had his uh, hit streak snap last night. And Hamels, that really good changeup for a strike. It's one and two. Hamels has it all. I mean, he has success in the regular season. He's built a, a fine resume of 99 and 74. He's going after win number 100. He had that terrific postseason in 08. He was the National League Championship Series, World Series MVP. And he also has everything as far as stuff. He's got that 93 
ninety four mile an hour cut fastball that he can run in on righties. He's got an outstanding changeup and a curveball as well. Liner in the right center field and a base hit for Solano. So Donovan Solano is aboard. But the Marlins over the years have had a way against Cole Hamels. He's just nine and twelve in his career against Miami. There's the scouting report. He's very aggressive, works quickly, gets in a good rhythm. That's that nasty changeup. And you can safely say 2013 was an unlucky year for Cole Hamels, except in his bank account with the new contract he signed. Yeah, first of a six year, $144 million deal. Lucas up now, and Hamels from the stretch. And a swing and a foul tip. Held there by Carlos Ruiz. You've talked about it, Rich, in this series. It's been a bullpen series for the Phillies. Their, their relievers have thrown 12 and two thirds innings more than their starters have. It really has been. <laughs> it's been. Uh, starters have gone four and a third. But it's September, and so most ball clubs can absorb games like that with all the relievers up and the expanded rosters. Darren Ruff is there, and he makes the catch. So Lucas is out. Here comes Christian Yelich. Yeah, let's see how the defense sets up for Ryan Sandberg's Philadelphia Phillies. There's Dominic Brown and Cesar Hernandez, Darren Ruff, Galveston Rollins, Utley, and Franson on the right side, and Chute back in the lineup. He's behind the plate. Interesting situation in Atlanta right now. Yelich takes a strike. Carlos Gomez homering in the first inning. Never got to home plate. Brian McCann intercepted him about 15 feet from home plate after he excessively celebrated his home run, shall I say, and was jawing with just about everybody in a Braves uniform around the bases. Little roller up the line, and Franzen's going to capture it before it rolls foul. And the umpires right now are meeting to decide if it's a run or not because he never touched home plate, but he he, he was prevented from touching home plate. Well, he flipped the bat, took his time getting out of the box, and as we have been able to watch some replays, was chirping at Paul Mahalam as he rounded first base and headed to second. Hamill's numbers. You can see the 3.62 ERA, and that's the, you know, I guess the one thing that he, as Tommy pointed out, hasn't had a whole lot of luck this year or run support for that matter. And talking about the few innings that the uh, starters have worked for the Phillies in this series. On the flip side of that, Cole Hamill's has gone five or more innings, 74 consecutive starts. High fly ball down the line, and it's going to land just foul. Darren Ruff doesn't run real well, and he couldn't get to that ball, and it narrowly missed being extra bases, and it just misses. Watch this. I tell you what, had it been just fair, he wouldn't have gotten there to make the catch. Stanton of uh, of all the Marlins has the most at bats against Hamels in his career. He's homered twice. He's tripled once. He's doubled twice. And that adds up in a 8 for 32 career. But Hamels has struck him out 15 times. Pitches a strike. I guess the, the question in that Atlanta game is does your home run count if you get thrown out before you touch the plate? Because uh, he's been thrown out. I don't think I've ever seen a catcher go up the line about 10 feet as McCann did and just stand at attention as if to say you're not getting by me. Well multiple Braves have been ejected as well. When the dust settles we'll <laughs> we'll sort it out for you here a much more civil game of baseball with Stanton working against Hamels and a 2 2 coming breaking ball. 
It stays at two and two. Ruggiano to follow. Marlins await the arrival of the Detroit Tigers. Tigers on Friday, Saturday night, and then closing day on Sunday afternoon. Tigers have yet to clinch the central, but it seems to be just an afterthought. Swing and a miss. Hamels pumped it up at 93 and elevated, and he threw it by Stanton. Three nights in a row choreographed tank tops. Now that's some serious planning. Brad Hand against Dominic Brown. Dominic Brown, Darren Ruff, Kevin Franzen. They yeah, were just looking at the uh, Tigers schedule there. They're in Minnesota tonight. Into center field a base hit. So they'll fly to Miami. They have off, so they'll be able to spend the off day in Miami. Well, here come the Tigers, and here come the fireworks. Well, Tigers and fireworks after the ball game. Sir Pizza four pack, just sixty bucks. Celebrate Star Wars night. Star Wars night. You hear that, Jim Holly? John Salser, everybody in the truck. Crack staff loves Star Wars. After the game, Fireworks Spectacular is presented by MetLife. Marlins.com, the place to go for tickets. So Star Wars night is Friday night, Tommy. Just have to go. Fastball strike. Favorite Star Wars character. CP3. Okay. I'll go Lando Calrissian. Because he was cool. <laughs> you pick one who somebody he, knows. He was the coolest guy <laughs> in the in the universe. See, I don't remember. He's the guy that played Gail Sayers. Remember in uh, Brian's song? Oh yeah. Billy D. Williams. Okay. Ruff strikes out, and here comes Franzen. Where was it? Uh, well, we, you know what? It was here. We haven't seen Chewbacca in a while. I think his outfit fell apart finally. <laughs> in the it the, got a little musty. The heat and the humidity of the old football stadium. So, by the way, just to sort things out in uh, 
Atlanta. They did count the run on the Gomez homer. And there was a history between Mahalam and Gomez. Apparently, Mahalam hit Gomez the last time they faced each other. Yeah, but you know what? I also saw the numbers that uh, Gomez was hitting over 300 in his career. He had already hit a couple of home runs against Mahalam. And they were glaring at each other before he had homered. So just a series of events that you can kind of see coming. <laughs> Franzen, and of course, the last thing the Braves want is to get anyone hurt in some kind of a free for all against a team that's not going anywhere, the Brewers. Oh, absolutely right about that. I mean, a team that has nothing to lose in the Brewers. Kevin Franzen. San Jose State University. Franzen lives in San Jose and was talking to me the other day. He already has his seat license for the 49ers who are building their new football stadium down in Santa Clara, which is right next to San Jose. Got a kind of an interesting career because he he had some ups with San Francisco and a couple of years ago, 2011, spent the entire season in, in the minor leagues with the Phillies. Takes outside. And Franza did not appear in the big leagues in 2011. Got back with the Phillies in 2012. Here's a great comparison on France, and it tells you all you need to know about him. His his idol was Craig Biggio. That tells you a little. And he's been compared. I don't know if you remember. Second baseman, scrappy, compared to the likes of a Mike Lansing. Those are two pretty good guys to be yeah. compared to. Well, Franzen draws a walk. And Freddie Galvis is coming up. And this is a part of the order that you you don't want to start walking guys, even though that pitch number four looked like it was in the strike zone. So Galvis, switch hitter. Phillies haven't had a whole lot of runners in scoring position in this series. Just four. They're 0 for 4. <laughs> that seems odd because that kind of tells it all. The Marlins had a night the other night where they seemingly had multiple guys in scoring position every other inning. That's the night the Marlins won 4 nothing and left uh, 13 on base. A good number of them in scoring position. Coy Hill doesn't like what he sees. He's going out to talk to the youngster Brad Hand. I'm not so sure Chuck likes what he sees either. He wants to see his left hander challenge, get ahead, use that change up. And you're at the part of the order, it's no time to nibble. Up the middle, Solano got a hand on it and got the out. Just knocked it down with his glove long enough to corral it and get the out. I don't think he's going to get a double play with Galvis running, but at least he got the runner at second. This tough play. Watch that ball come up on him. He's down. He's ready to stay down on the ball. It comes up. And how about the concentration of Solano to stay with it and still get the out at second base? That's a good job. It is to stay under control because you know you've got a, a runner with a little bit of speed and Franz in it first. It's an important out certainly for Ham because now he just has to get Hamels and he gets out of the inning. And Solano gets in front of that one and flips it to Echeverria. Nicely done by the Marlins second baseman. And Brad Hand gets through the second. Scoreless tonight here in Miami.
second. Even Mike Redmond knows that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority. The Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Counts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. Brad Hand is through two scoreless. Marlins trying to get some runs for him. That won't be easy tonight against Cole Hamels. Although Hamels gave up a, a bunch of runs in his last time out, he lost 6 4 to the Mets. Just thinking we should have uh, saved the disclaimer for the fifth inning and had Jose Fernandez read it. Jose is going to be on with us on headset in the dugout. If you're just joining us, fifth inning, you want to be here for sure. The entire fifth inning, Jose Fernandez will be our guest. Hopefully, the lads in the dugout will leave him be and, and let him chat. O2 to Ruggiano. I just missed. Think about Hamels. He has that's some certain pitchers have just one pitch to put a guy away with. He has numerous. He, he can put a guy away with that fastball. We saw him strike out Stanton with a high fastball. He can cut it. He can go with the changeup. Okay, he talked about that outing last time for him against the Mets. He gave up a first inning home run to David Wright. Phil's almost had that situation with Ryan Howard and that is Howard coming back from his knee injury to play at the end of the season but the timing just didn't work out Howard is starting to play in some some games at the uh, spring training complex which the Phil's need to see so they can move forward on next year right? you give a guy like David Wright all the credit in the world and I like Howard and even watching right Halliday try to throw who didn't have his best stuff. Guys that could have just mailed it in and said, you know what, I think I'm done for the season. And start their offseason early. And all of a sudden Hamels loses Ruggiano and will start all over again with a former teammate, Let's go Placido Blanco. Nice hit bat by Ruggiano, who was behind the count right out of the shoot, 0 and 2. Hamels misses up and in. Baseball has broken out all across the big leagues. Important games tonight. Cleveland at home against the White Sox. The Indians still hanging on to that second American League wild card chip. But the White Sox have scored first in that game. It's 1 0 bottom of the second. Liner down the right field line foul and out of play. What a dramatic finish for the Indians <laughs> last night. And anytime the Indians have a dramatic finish, you always want to dial up the highlights so you can hear their radio voice and one of the great voices in Major League Baseball, Tom Hamilton. Call. Had the uh, great call on a two run, pinch it, walk off home run by Jason Giambi. And you talk about highs and lows for the the Indians fans that were there. In the top half of the ninth they went in with a 3 2 lead. And Chris Perez their closer gave up home runs to Viciato and Deaza. And all of a sudden the White Sox had the lead. It was a big day for the St. Louis Cardinals. As they beat Washington. 4 1. As that was happening, the Pirates were going down to the Cubs 4 2. And the Mets beat the Reds 1 to nothing. And so it's a three game lead for St. Louis going into the final weekend of the season. Pittsburgh is three back, Cincinnati is four back. And Rich, one final note on that Cleveland win to show you the kind of year they're having. It was their 11th walk off win. They could be one of those teams that if they get through the wild card game 
and into a division series that could scare you. Well, they, they got a skipper that knows what to do when they're in that situation, Terry Francona, who's done a tremendous job. Well, I hope everyone's this okay, year. okay over there. John Tuitu is the captain of the Camerwell down there. He's our fabulous low third artistic director slash camera entrepreneur. There's a one two and it's in. Now he's had a good year too, but he always strives strives to be better, which you you like. Nice. He's taking a big step backwards though in his. Uh, T-shirt. He had a UC Davis baseball shirt on the other day. <laughs> now it looks like he's sporting a Penn State shirt. Still a fine institution, Penn State. Well, they're starting to get a few more scholarships. I think uh, he probably did that in honor of Chris Wheeler. That's right. One of the uh, broadcasters for the Phillies is a big Penn State fan. Chris Wheeler working with uh, Sarge, Gary Matthews. Ruggiano still at first. This has been an extended inning already, and this is only the second hitter for Hamels. Ruggiano worked the walk after falling behind 0 and 2, and he's running on the pitch. Polanco pulls it, diving stop Rollins on his knees, and safe. Franzen got clipped on the slide. Polanco just got there. CB Buckner with the call, and Miami has runners first and second. What a wild play. Well, with Ruggiano on the move, Rollins goes over to cover the bag. All of a sudden, there's some room on the left side. Rollins makes a good recovery, throws from his knee, and, you know, it's always hard. We talk about it when a, a runner slides. Usually, you see a runner head first slide into first. Polanco goes straight on. His foot clipped the bag and then went and got Franzen's foot. Much harder call for that first base umpire. He doesn't have the bang bang of the ball and glove and runner hitting the bag. Yeah, he looked out. Well, Blanco gets himself the infield single. And the Marlins get a break. Echeverria now. Runs first and second. Nobody out. One. Coy Hill is on deck. If you're Hamels, this is an important hitter because you got the bottom of the lineup. You've got Hill and Hand after Echeverria. Hill is hitting 163, and of course Hand not real accomplished with a piece of wood in his hands. Again is out in front 0 and 2 on a Marlin hitter and he spins. Ruggiano had designs on third base. The Phils know that Ruggiano will run. He's been caught a couple of times lately out at uh, second base trying to get to third. Echeverria cranks one center field, hits it deep. Hernandez in full flight, he won't get it. Off the wall, and right behind Ruggiano is Polanco. Round they come, third base, headed to the plate. One scores, two scores, it's 2 nothing. Boy, was that fun to watch. <laughs> it was almost like a relay race in which Polanco handed the baton to Ruggiano and just followed him home. Brad, think about it. Polanco had a nice angle. As soon as he saw this ball travel over the head of the center fielder Cesar Hernandez, he takes off. Ball is really scorched by Echeverria. It's going to be his eighth triple of the year. See Polanco, he's got the angle. Now he takes off. Ruggiano can take his time a little bit. He's going to score easily. But great base running by Polanco to score <laughs> right behind Ruggiano.
And Ruggiano goes back to possibly tag up, and then once he saw it heading over the head of the center fielder, he take, he, he's able to take off. In Polanco's case, he saw it, and he took off right away. Philly's infield is in. Coy Hill is looking intently at Joe Espada, who really had to manage the traffic at third. Yeah, this is always a squeeze situation when you have this, but, you know, if you're Mike Redmond, you're not sure of the... The batter, you're not sure Coy Hill can he drop down a bunt here? You haven't seen him enough in that situation. And Hamels, as he has done with uh, seemingly everybody in this inning, and out in front 0 2. Chopper to short, Rollins looks the runner back and gets the out. If you're watching this telecast and you've got your laptop going, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We'll keep you up to date with the Marlins, all your other favorite Florida sports team. Now the Marlins probably have a better idea of what kind of bunter Brad Hand is yeah. than they do Coy Hill. The the downside is if you squeeze and it it doesn't work, you take the bat out of Donovan Solano's hands, and while that doesn't Put fear in a lot of National League pitchers' hearts. Solano has been the Marlins' best with a runner in scoring position, even though it would be with two outs. That's a Korea Rich now with the eight triples. Is behind Segura, Marte, Span, and Gomez, all with ten, and has had some big games against the Phillies this year. Edge at third. And fouls it now. Brad Hand was pretty good with a hockey stick in his hand growing up. Chaska, Minnesota. Had a decent swing there, and it's one and one. Got a couple of career hits. He can really help himself here. Hamels gets to strike. It's one and two. Just looking, Rich Echeverria with 41 RBIs now, 11 against the Phillies. Remember, he had that seven RBI game in Philly. Little tapper up the line. Echeverria, to me, Tommy is is a player as well that you surround him with a little better supporting cast. And I think he takes a big step forward. Yeah, and all of a sudden you don't look and depend on him for a lot of offense, even though he will supply it, but uh, all of a sudden a little bit of the weight is off his shoulders. And that could be said of a lot of the hitters in the Marlins lineup. Two run triple for Echeverria. And is hanging in there against a good lefty. Tell you what, the, the Marlins just seem to find a way against Cole Hamels. And we talked about him 9 and 12 in his career against Miami. With a really good ERA. Yeah, good, a good earned run average, but here he is, 40 pitches already, with just one out in the second inning. That is strike three call. Now it's up to Donovan Solano if the Marlins going to get another run out of this inning. You know, he's had games even if you look this year. Cole Hamels had a game against the Marlins earlier in the year that he lost two to nothing. He went eight innings and gave up just four hits and two runs. Now you've got Solano who has had a knack for hitting with runners in this spot. Solid line drive to right center field. His first at bat. It's just to kind of to make the comparison year to year and you hope there's a, a happy medium. You hope he continues the way he did this year but Donovan Solano. And looking back at his season last year, hit 246 with runners in scoring position. So much improved this year. Oh. 
to strike. Solano peels away from the plate. One and two. Hamill's a San Diego native. He's now 29. Amazing, this is his eighth year in the Phillies rotation. That ball rides in. Right now, Sandberg looking at that pitch count and thinking of all the pitchers he's used out of the bullpen so far, the first two games. Yeah, this was not a game that he expected to be a bullpen game. And it might not. Hamels has the ability to just put it in gear and cruise. That's strike three. Jordan Baker rings him up. Solano is arguing at home plate. And Danny Echevarria for the two run triple. the third in the fifth Jose Fernandez will join us he was shut down on September 11th after that terrific performance and Mike Redmond was talking to us today about how things began in spring training it wasn't on a very good note thinking about this the other day you think about this spring training and, and you know his first time out he hits Stan in the head you know in spring training and, and you're thinking to yourself man wow what you know is this is this spring training going to be too much for, for the, is he, is he going to be too nervous? Is he going to be able to, you know, get through like, man, when should we pitch him in a game? Should we, you know, how, how do we handle this? How is he going to handle it? And to think that we went from that to, you know, rookie of the year, yeah. hopefully being the rookie of the year. Um, it's just truly amazing. And that incident with Stan when he hit him in the head was the very first few days of Spring training is that one is ripped by Hernandez who hits the ball hard seemingly every time up. But Ruggiero makes the catch. And Jose has been a, as you might imagine, chatting with anybody he possibly can. Red told us today, last night, right during the game, he came up to him, started talking, and Red said, hey, I gotta watch this game here, Jose. But he's been a very good teammate, guys, and you're gonna have fun talking to him, I know, in a few innings. And yeah, look forward to it. I think he's been uh, trying. Desperately to keep himself occupied over the last uh, week, whether it's uh, scouring the outfield for fly balls. He's had some of the uh, best uh, batting practice power shagging days of anybody. Power shagging. It's a new word. I like that. It's uh, Austin Powers like. Nice play by Echeverria. And Rollins bounces out. Hand has the first two outs of the third. Twitter poll, ATTU versus Twitter poll. Should Danny Echeverria be considered for a Gold Glove? Hashtag Etch yes. Uh, hashtag Etch no. I think yes. I mean, we see him all the time. I don't think he'll win a gold club, but I think he certainly should be considered. Good. 
Utley now singled in the first. Brad Hand has a 2 0 lead thanks to a Danny Echeverria's two run triple. Utley smacked one hard into center field. So a lot of baseball is already in the books, and a lot of those games significant in the wild card in division standings. Hold the first. Lucas has the ball and the out, and hand goes one, two, three through the fills in the third. for Coventry Healthcare of Florida. Tommy, what do you think about Pink? I I like her performances. <laughs> Nicely handled. She's uh, actually very entertaining. Puts on a great show. <laughs> Cole Hamels, right now trails in this ball game, two nothing. The Marlins was really good at bats. Ruggiano's walk, Polanco's infield hit, and Echeverria's triple. And Lucas turns on one, smacks it down the line and into the corner. You can't stop. And Lucas, just when you think you can maybe get something in the uh, inner part of the plate and maybe get it by him, maybe get him to pop it up, Ed Lucas uh, fools everybody and he turns on a pit. Targets away, not where Hamels wanted to throw that pitch, and Lucas keeps it fair. In the next few days, Ed Lucas is going to complete his first major league season, and he's also going to be a father. He might not have a whole lot of time to reflect on this season. <laughs> Yelich now takes outside. Three hits in the series for Yelich. Iconic wooden cap goes on. Christian Yelich, our spotlight player, September hit leaders. Yelich, Solano, and Lucas. Solano, Lucas, Yelich in the batting order. All three of them have had good Septembers. Hamels misses away. Oakland lost today three to one the Angels beat them in Anaheim. So the A's sit at 94 wins. And I'm sure they'll be uh, checking out to see what Boston does. Tonight in Colorado of all places. The Red Sox with 95 wins. So 
So the A's were a game back for home field advantage. Now they're a game and a half back. Rockies beat the Red Sox last night, eight to three. Yelich takes in first and second now, and nobody out. Here comes Stanton. Tigers on a Saturday night, and it's the final Saturday spectacular of the season on the 28th at 7:10. All you can eat seats just 27 bucks. After the game, head to the West Plaza for a live concert with Gacho and Fito Blanco, powered by South Florida Four. Go to Marlins.com today. Well, a chance to add on. A couple of runners on, nobody out, and Giancarlo up to the plate. Stanton gets under that ball and lifts it to left. Brown comes in and makes the catch. That is a pitch. You can uh, honestly say Giancarlo Stanton just missed. If he, you know, it's just a matter of the fractions of an inch. But getting under it with the easy fly ball, as opposed to hitting it in the Budweiser bar. Ruggiano. Well, say what you want about Hamels having a, a tough luck year, and even his career numbers, as you pointed out at the outset of the show, against the Marlins, good ERA, bad record. But he's hurt himself in this ball game a couple of times, a pair of walks. And the walk to Ruggiano was especially painful because he was out in front of him 0-2. Right now he doesn't have command. And usually when you see Hamels locked in, he's he's got a good rhythm going. He has command of that changeup that he works off his fastball. But neither of those he has a whole lot of command on. That's thus the pitch count up real high. There's that good changeup, which at times when he's throwing it well, he's not afraid to throw it two or three times in a row. Rays and Yankees are tied 1 1 in the third. And guess what? Cleveland rocks. 2 1 Cleveland over the White Sox in the fourth. That is strike three called. Ruggiano rung up. And after giving up a leadoff double and a walk to Yelich, Hamels gets two outs. Well, that strikeout is fourth of the night, and it's also his 200th of the season. So if you don't look at the win loss record if you look at 217 218 innings 200 strikeouts now just 49 50 walks now in the year so that's low and a 362 ERA if you just looked at that you'd say this guy's got to be 15 16 game winner. 8 and 14 I can remember a poll question. Midpoint of the year when he was two and nine or something to that effect. Yeah, one and nine. He started. He was uh, on May 31st. And the question was, will he end up over 500? And a lot of people felt, yeah, he would. I think I said no. I think I remember that one. Rich. Yeah, I think you did too, Tom. <laughs> I think we both said, I yeah. don't think so. And not because of his performance, but because the team that uh, he had around and the Phils were struggling at that point. Sharp ground ball short. Rollins waits. Utley gets there. Rollins had committed. Utley just got there in time. Marlins leave a couple.
He's limited the fills to just two hits. Both Marlin runs coming on a two run triple by a Danny Echevarria. They had a nice nine pitch inning last inning. So he's got himself a little lead, but I'll tell you what, remember that major league debut for Brad Hand? He went six innings, gave up one hit, no runs. It was a game against the Atlanta Braves. I think there was a, a excuse me gave up one run and he he set and established an amazing record he was a second starter since 1946 to do that in his major league debut go six innings give up one hit fewer than two runs and lose. <laughs> I think there was a, a good number of uh, folks from uh, the Chaska Minnesota area. Wasn't the mayor there or, or some high uh, public official a, a public official would be the best way for me to put it because I'm not sure if it was the mayor or not. But a uh, high elected public official. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure maybe in Chaska they just appoint them. Ruiz turns on one. Count full three and two. Ruiz, Dominic Brown, Darren Ruff. Phillies half of the fourth. Marlins looking to win this series. Pop up. Solano behind Lucas. Calls him off. There's one thing that Ed Lucas knows. He knows what every everybody in the infield is supposed to do. He knows the when he's at second and the pop ups behind the first baseman, he calls him off. So when he's at first, he's expecting to hear it. Not many things surprise him. That's yeah, that Dartmouth education. I think it's the education of the baseball and all the games he played yes. the minor league education. I checked the other day over 3000. Minor league at bats. For Ed Lucas. Brown's pop up has Echeverria running behind Polanco and Polanco says look I'm a gold lover three times over and I know you have a good angle on that but I'm here I'll take it <laughs> he he really is a terrific guy he's tremendous and uh, he's been good for Echeverria this year tomorrow not tomorrow Friday you guys are killing me in there. <laughs> Friday. I know I'll not be here tomorrow, Rich. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow we'll be texting each other to set the wardrobe for the weekend. But Friday night, Marlins Live. Brought to you by South Florida Honda Dealers. Another soft pop. This one Stanton will run under. Brad Hand with a 10 pitch inning.
is at your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel-efficient Hondas by Coventry Healthcare of Florida, lighting the way to better health. And by Hialeah Park Casino, a world of entertainment. Come and live it. Now open. Beautiful skyline of Miami proper. 2-0. Marlins on top. It's the bottom of the fourth. Cole Hamill's out there for the fills. And the guy that did the damage in the second, Danny Echeverria, takes Lowen in. His triple hit over the head of Cesar Hernandez in center field. Yeah, Hernandez not giving him the benefit because he's still playing him fairly shallow and actually shading a little bit to right center. So his theory is that Echeverria can't do that again. Triples leaders. Carlos Gomez, we were talking about him earlier tonight, but look at everybody with 10. Marte, Segura, Span, Gomez. Two and two. It was a dramatic and uh, necessary win for Cleveland last night to keep that sole possession of second wild card spot because the uh, Rangers were able to beat Houston again that matchup just got underway in Texas Houston and Texas as to the bottom of the first and scoreless Cleveland 2 1 over the White Sox in the fourth again the Cardinals won today the Pirates and the Reds lost so a three game lead in the central for St. Louis. How about last night the uh, the almost no hitter of Michael Walker. <laughs> and it was uh, Ryan Zimmerman swinging bunt just a little chopper over the pitcher's head. Walker couldn't get it. It's the third time this season there's been a game of eight and two thirds of no hit ball broken up. In the ninth. Coy Hill waits. 3 2. End of the bat there. Uh, well, he shovels, and I think if he could do it over again, he may have taken it out of the glove and thrown it. Yeah, he had time, and he was far enough away where he could have done that, but uh, he knows best. From America's number one pregame show comes the all new Fox Football Daily. Featuring an all-star lineup of experts and NFL legends. Everything you love on Sunday, every day of the week. Fox Football Daily, weeknights. 6 Eastern on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. Hill lines it to right. Ruff makes the catch. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Rich, you saw the nice play there by uh, Chase Utley. Got the out, and uh, it's been a while now for Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins. As they have uh, played more games together than any other active duo at shortstop and second base. Rollins broke in in 2000. Utley came aboard 2003. The streak starting with J. Rowe on April 24, 2003. They're approaching 1,100 games together overall, and that is fourth highest all time. Later, we'll look at the all time leaders. Jimmy Rollins has had almost 30 partners over there at second base. He Said Marlon Anderson was a little bit unorthodox. Called Placido Polanco, a slick guy. The Marlins third baseman was his partner. And he said, Chase, a little more rigid, an ABC guy, but they've worked it out very well together. And you have to to play that long. They overcame Cano and Jeter earlier this year, approaching 1,100 together. We'll look at the leaders and the Marlins all time combos later during the game tonight. That's a good description of Chase Utley. He, he's, he's not the smoothest. A little robotic, but uh, certainly gets it done. An ABC guy. Yeah. 
Well that uh, that pair will be together next year if they're both healthy. I would say the Marlins leader would be uh, Alex Gonzalez and Luis Castillo. A swing and a miss by Brad Hand in a one two three inning from Cole Hamels. Jose Fernandez joins us when we return. In beard, play like a champ profile. John Carlos Stanton. His OPS September and early October 9:50. Manley Ramirez and Gary Sheffield. We only need to have better. We are efforting to get Jose Fernandez from the Marlins dugout. Once we do, we will welcome him with open arms. But right now. We're just trying to jump through a few technical hoops and get them rolling. A few technical difficulties, as they say. Kevin Franzen now. He walked back in the second. You know, Boston that uh, game. In St. Louis, that Michael Walker had that no hitter broken up with two outs in the ninth inning it was a, a a loss to uh, Gio Gonzalez, who threw the ball well. Gave up just a couple of runs in seven innings. St. Louis beat the Cardinals, or rather, excuse me, St. Louis beat the Nationals again today, and Jordan Zimmerman was denied his 20th win. Yeah, he was. Uh, we saw him pick up number 19, and today. Couldn't get number 20. Unless Davey Johnson wants to maybe bring him back on three days rest Sunday. Friends in waiting. Hand zips in a fastball for a strike. And it's three and one. Marlins have two runs against Cole Hamels, but Brad Hand so far has shut down the Phillies. And he comes back to get another strike. And it's three and two, and Hand has uh, set down eight straight. In the air, center field, Ruggiano glides back. And he makes the catch. Jose Fernandez has had a terrific rookie season and he joins us now for the Marlins dugout. Jose, thanks for joining us. How are you, buddy? Everything good? And right now we are attempting. See, he's ready. Yeah, he's ready. The, he's ready. Apparently the audio is not ready. We'll get there. We're making progress, so we have the headsets 
Just keep telling yourself that. Just keep telling yourself that. Hey, by the way, watching uh, Brad Hand a little bit, he's he's taking a page out of it, and every pitcher that pitches in this ballpark should do it. You had a nice conversation with Tom Kohler about how he's turned things around, attacked the strike zone, gotten ahead, and it looks like Brad Hand's doing that here. He's gotten a lot of fly balls to uh, to the outfield. Breaking ball line in the center field. Freddie Galvis has a hit. A one out single in the fifth. And so Hamels comes up now with a runner at first and an out here in the fifth. And we'll see if the Phillies have Hamels bunting. You know, looking uh, before the game at, at Hamels, who has 10 hits this year, he's always swung the bat pretty well. Look at that number 13 sacrifice bunts. Something a pitcher can be proud of. And he fouls that one off. All right, let's go down to the dugout now. Jose Fernandez joins us. Hey. Hi, hi, buddy. How are you? How are we doing? We're, we're doing good. How about you? Yeah, I'm, oh, my God. I'm uh, a little bored, you know, but uh, loving it, loving it. How have you kept yourself busy this last week? We saw the uh, display you had in center field the other day, and uh, it was uh, pretty impressive out there shagging balls. You must be going nuts. Yeah, man, you know how it is. I got to get tired somehow, and uh, I got a lot of energy and uh, going crazy here in the dugout, but uh, I wish I could play, you know? Well, you, you've been, as uh, Rich and I have talked about, you've been a joy for us to watch. When it all started back in spring training, what did, what did you expect of this season? I uh, you know, was really looking forward to get it. I mean, not looking forward to get a double A, but uh, I knew I was going there, and uh, I was ready getting my apartment ready and everything. So when they told me, hey, uh, you really, you, you told me the last day, uh, they said, what are you doing? And I was trying to get my apartment set up and everything. And uh, uh, they told me, no, I don't need to get your apartment because you're going to the big league. So. Pretty amazing though. A lot of people got happy and stuff, but uh, I'm here. They're not going to let me do an interview alone, I think. No, it's, you know, hey, sometimes that happens, but the veteran, you, you'll learn to, to be a veteran and just to shake the seeds off. Oh, man. You know, it's, it's your, just part of it. It's you know. your buddy Alvarez, yeah. too. Yeah. Alvarez. <laughs> yeah, he has to be, you know, he has I know. to be. In there, I mean, but. you guys do that nice thing on the baselines and, and all that. What's up with that? I don't know, man. They're just kidding me right now. Jeez. <laughs> Jose, we talk so much about young hitters having to make adjustments in their first year in the big leagues after a month or so. What about for a pitcher? What adjustments did you have to make a month into this season? I mean, I, I think you really have to make a lot. And uh, I mean, my first five stars, I learned a lot, and I learned. Uh, I think I learned fast. But uh, I mean, the strike zone, the hitters, and uh, you know, made mistakes, made pitches that you know you got to get paid for. But maybe in the minor leagues and a ball, you don't. You made mistakes and you get away with it sometimes, but uh, I mean, you know, some stuff that you got to work on and, and, and it's just learning, and that's what I like to do. You know, I like to learn a lot, so that's what I'm here. How about your adjustments in between starts? Some of the things you did to keep yourself prepared for your next start? I mean, you guys know, you know, I like to work. You guys see me work a lot, and uh, I think that all the fans know that I work out a lot, and uh, and you know I like things. Uh, I like to work on things, and uh, it doesn't matter how good my start was. I think there is something there that we should work on in any pitch and uh, uh, in location or something. So I do work on stuff every day. So that's why now it's so hard just being here watching and seeing my teammates playing and giving their heart on the field and just here watching. So it's a little hard. Now I know, that as you were coming up in high school over in, in Tampa, Orlando Chenea was such a, a big influence on you, and a lot of what you guys did. In terms of conditioning, or things that he learned over in Japan, do you still do those drills? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of them, and uh, I think that you know they helped me out a lot, and uh, really, really like them. So I uh, keep doing them. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll take a time out. We'll be back more with Jose Fernandez, the fish on top, two nothing. Hey, what am I supposed to do now?
presentado por Hialeah Park Casino, abierto ahora. In Miami, the Marlins have a 2-0 lead against Cole Hamels. Brad Hand has been pitching well. Fish got a two-run triple from Adani Echeverria. That was back in the second. And Hamels goes to work in the bottom of the fifth. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton and Jose Fernandez, our special analyst here. We need, <laughs> he's looking for something to do, so we figure we put hey, him. You know, I appreciate this so much, man. Uh, I'm going crazy, really, really going crazy in here, so this is huge. Now, we, we touched upon Orlando and, and his work with you in Tampa. Your pitching coach here is another Tampa guy, and, and Chuck Hernandez, who saw you as a high schooler. How important has that been, a, a familiar face to help you through this first year in the big leagues? I mean, it's been a lot, man. And Chuck, first of all, he's, he's a great coach. Everybody knows that he's doing a really good job here this year with the pitching and stuff. I think the, a lot of guys have been learning a lot and doing a lot of good things. Uh, I mean, to me, personally, he's a, he's, a, he's a friend. Uh, you know, I talk to him about everything, and it's pretty amazing, you know, having him and uh, having a really good pitching coach like that here and uh, have a friend, too. So it's pretty amazing. 2-1 pitch from Hamels. Solano sends it to center. Hernandez around it makes the catch. Jose, you talk about uh, learning things, and as you learn with each start, what did you take away? What did you learn from that whole situation with Atlanta? You know, I think there was a misunderstanding, man. And the best, the game, the game got me there. You know, I play the game hard. You guys know that. The fans know that. And I did the emotion of the last start of the year. And, you know, a lot of fans. And I had uh, 20 people here in my family. And I think the uh, game got the best of me. But, I mean, you know what, man? And uh, a lot of things happened in that game. And, uh, you know, knowing how I am, I like to compete so much. And uh, the best got the best of me right there. And uh, hopefully, you know, learn from it. And not let it happen again, you know. But I uh, still want to keep playing the game hard. Uh, still going to keep playing the way that I do. And uh, that's who I am, though. Hamels, a 1-0 pitch to Ed Lucas. You are certainly a, a, a terrific force in the community. Having watched you do the charity work that you've done this year, you helped us in the fantasy auction. We see the kids that you bring down on the field, the time that you spend signing autographs uh, after the There's, I mean, majority of players in baseball a don't do that and B you never see rookies do it what prompted you to be like that here this year you know man uh, yeah, for me to me it's simple you know I think the kids I think first of all the kids I do a lot of stuff with the kids and I think that, you know when I was a kid I would have loved really loved somebody so a professional baseball player came up to me and give me a shake my hand or, or give me a ball or do something like that you know I think that kid will remember that for the rest of his life and that's something that I I really like to do and uh, something that I really love. But uh, I love the kids, man. And, and you know, so for me, getting the chance to do that is pretty amazing. Yeah, you have uh, appeared during the season like you've also brought out the personalities of some of your other uh, pitchers. Uh, we've watched the way you interact with Jacob Turner, let's say, who's a pretty quiet guy. Yeah. But uh, you get him going a little bit. I mean, Jacob and I, we, 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 we play around all day. And, uh, I like him. He's amazing. Uh, we have a really good relationship with all the all the guys here, and uh, we got a pretty good relationship. And hopefully, we're getting to know each other and uh, getting to know everybody, what everybody's like, and uh, like that. I mean, I think a team needs to know everybody. And uh, something I think next year something good is going to happen here because we got for sure we got talent and uh, we want to play. So I think that hopefully a lot of good things are going to happen. I remember when you got a chance to see Cliff Lee pitch. That was special for you. Oh my God. A guy like Lee or any other pitchers that for you were, were a real treat just to watch pitch this year. I mean you know I watched with Lee and then in, in person and last game that he pitched at home against us so through a hell of a game 14 strike outs and uh, he's just amazing man as a pitcher and as a person I got a chance to talk to him in the All-Star game and I uh, took a lot of pictures together and I took to him a lot so I mean learned a lot from it and uh and he's, 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 a good, he's a good guy. He's a really good pitcher. So I like him as a pitcher and as a person. Off-season plans. What do you plan and uh, how do you – when will you start getting ready for spring training? Uh, I'm already start getting ready, I think, for <laughs> next year. Uh, <laughs> I've been working. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, going to take time off. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to take time off. I think that I'm going to do – I'm going to keep working hard until, until next year is done. And uh, hopefully there I can take a little bit. Some days off, but I mean, I'm going to keep working hard. I want to travel too. I want, but I want to get my stuff done when I'm traveling. I'm going to travel with my mom a lot. I think that I want to take it to Brazil. So she really wants to go there. So I think we're going to go there. That's a great place. 2 2 pitch coming to Christian Yelich and Ruiz on his way out to the mound. Now, your development as a pitcher has been 
astounding and really fun to watch. But watching you develop as a hitter this year was pretty cool. I mean, to end it with a home run, but you had a really nice, solid month and a half, two months with the bat, didn't you? I think so. And I think the last two months were a lot better. And uh, <laughs> uh, I was joking with this. She was part of it. We work on bonding every day. That's what I do. I work on bonding every day. And uh, I learned hitting. And uh, I told him, hey, because I was hitting balls for MVP. And, uh, hey, I'm going to hit like Carlos Gomez now, the guy from the Brewers. And uh, I changed my stands. And he's like, you can't hit like that. You, can't, you really can't touch it. The ball like that, when you swing like that, you swing too hard. So we kind of sense the stands, and uh, that's just fun, man. You know, that's just a uh, good part of the game, and getting a chance to, you know, to help my team, and, and hopefully get a chance to win. You know. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. You did a, a fine job of dodging sunflower seeds. Yeah. And, and good luck with the rookie of the year voting. You've got our votes. Thank you, sir. Don't thank be you. out of the country when they name rookie of the year. No, no, no. I don't think <laughs> it will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jose. Thanks a lot. And significant for St. Louis. They stretch another game from Pittsburgh. They're three up over Pittsburgh, four up over Cincinnati now. Over the American League, the Rays, a one run lead in the fourth. Cleveland rocks right now, a 2 1 lead over the White Sox. They've got a game lead in that second wild card spot over Texas, who are scoreless against the Astros. And Detroit, 1 0 over Minnesota in the second. Jimmy Rollins. That's amazing. You're talking about this series, Rich, about the Philly starters. It's just been the opposite for the Marlins starters. Had the Nathan Evaldi, Henderson Alvarez, and you throw in what Brad Hand's done the first five innings. 19 and two thirds innings, they've given up just two runs. Brian Flynn, right now in Miami's bullpen. Is Flynn warming up to come in this game or is he warming up just to get some work? He's warming up to get some work. He may see a little action over the weekend, but I would say just getting some work. Tonight, the uh, Colorado Rockies are playing the Boston Red Sox, and it's the final game at Coors Field for Todd Helton. And they have a full house, it looks like, in Denver for what has got to be a special night. Bouncer to third, backing up Polanco and gets the out. Marlins up 2 0. Let's go to Los Angeles for this Fox Sports 1 game break.
Thanks Julie that uh, that beef between Mahalam and Gomez goes back. I believe it was June when Mahalam hit. Gomez with a pitch and Gomez exacting some revenge for Brian McCann playing the role of roadblock at home plate. We've seen him do that before a little <laughs> bit not quite the roadblock <laughs> he did tonight though. Another base hit from Chase up. There's Carlos Ruiz who has popped out twice. One of the things that you can see Brad Hand working on as his uh, career grows is a little more command of a breaking ball. Because think about it, left handers tonight have three of the four hits. He's got the good change up, his fastball's fine, but his, his breaking bits, his curveball's probably his third best pitch. That one is hit hard and deep, but foul. That's a long ways for a foul ball. And it counts one ball and one strike to the Panamanian catcher. It's been a struggle for Ruiz this year for a lot of reasons. He started the year suspended 25 games for use of a banned stimulant. Jim. Hamstring injury as well. A strike to Ruiz. And working here with one out in the sixth. Bouncer to third. Polanco, a tough pick. There's the turn in time. Solano tiptoes over. Huntley had a good hard slide. That's a nifty double play, starting with Polanco and the turn by Solano. Nicely done. Uh, the veteran and the youngster. The sea creatures race. He did not qualify. It's from uh, Cloudy with a chance of meatballs too. There he is. Yeah, he, the berry can't swim. I like to see the. Uh, oh wait a minute, is that it's a pickle? More baseball appropriate than a strawberry. Although you get a strawberry from sliding. You, you and get, a get pickle a is a rundown. You're getting a rundown. You're getting a pickle. I think we got to get that octopus through a car wash in the off season. Well, it's nice to see that the uh, sea creatures have started to swap paint a little bit uh, NASCAR style. That time the crab got caught along the uh, the Clevelander railing. Stan Ruggiano Polanco against Hamels. 
Five innings in is Hamels. And that pitch number 90. All of a sudden, Hamels has settled down. He's retired nine straight. Six strikeouts, two walks. Stanton again gets under one and hit one very similar to that his last time up. Season comes to a close on Sunday. That's why it's called Closing Day. Marlins and Tigers pick up a Pepsi 4 for 54 pack, and all fans get a 2014 magnetic schedule courtesy of Fox Sports Florida. After the game, all kids can run the bases in the Diamond Dash. Marlins.com your place for tickets. Well, it was opening day on April 1st in Washington, D.C. The home opener was April 8th against the Braves. Giano on a changeup out in front and it's 0 2. There was hope. There was a lot of growth. And there was a 15 and 10 June. Where the Marlins played some good baseball. Been their only winning month of the year. You can hear the bat break. Rollins has to hurry and he does to get the out. Rollins can still play the heck out of shortstop. Yes, he can. Toyota Trends. Last game in a stretch of 21 games in 20 days, spanning four cities. That's your Toyota Trend. Well, had the, uh, the doubleheader in New York. Had a split doubleheader in Washington, D.C. Polanco lines it foul. The two runs sitting up on the scoreboard in this ball game came in the second. Cole Hamels got out in front of Justin Ruggiano and two walked him. Polanco beat out an infield hit and Echeverria hit a two run triple. A Polanco in his career, three for ten. Against Cole Hamels. Talking about what a pro Blanco is and what he's meant to this club this year. And it, it, it just showed in Philadelphia with the ovation he got from the Philly fans having played there. Another line drive into the seats. Two and two, hundred pitch coming up. Hamill's hopeful if he can keep it at two nothing that his ball club can score some runs. Both teams have managed just four hits. Well, he's gone. Beyond five innings again. Mentioned that stat earlier tonight. It's 75 consecutive games now. That Cole Hamels has gone five innings or more. 27 of his 32 starts this year, he's gone six innings or more. Blanco figures they'll try the other side of the field. Pitch count. That second inning was the big one. Was the Inning in which the Marlins had three terrific at bats Ruggiano, Polanco, and Echeverria. In a right, Ruff won't get it. They'll pick it on a hop. Polanco takes a left turn and he gets there with a dime. Probably a double. Although Ruff didn't have the best of luck with it. 
Well, of my last calculations, that is 2,140 career hits for Placido Polanco. Is the pitch inside? No, Chuch has to reach for it. So Hamels missed his target, pays the price a little bit. On a great at bat by Polanco. He foul pitches off everywhere. No hesitation, so I believe a double all the way. Now it's back to Echeverria. Strokes it to right. Ruff gets another chance and he makes the running catch. And Hamels is through the sixth. And this game is on to the seventh. Two nothing Miami. Por Fernández Denton. Yeah, we see you. Down the Clevelander. Maybe we'll get a little camera 12 this weekend with the Tigers in town. Two nothing. Marlins on top. And for Brad Hand, it's been quite a night. There's your comparison. Pair of lefties in hand. There's been two runs better than Cole Hamels. Boy, and the key for Brad Hand and that bases on balls column. Just one walk in this one tonight. His pitch count in much better shape than Hamels. Dominic Brown. Darren Ruff. Kevin Franzen. Ninety six that last fastball from Brad head. He's got it going and they're enjoying it up in Chaska. There's the pitch speed range from ninety six to seventy seven. Breaking ball away and it's one and two. Ooh, wow. It's a tall man at the plate, and that's a, a close pitch. Looked like it got plenty of the plate. It did. Yeah, it did. Just at the knees. It can be a tough call for an umpire. Yeah, that one had to be. He stayed with that fastball and went right after Dominic Brown. And out here in the seventh. Freeze Cam is brought to you by Frostburg Coors Light. Oh, this. Is the double play. Look at Solano and Utley knows how to take out a, a middle infielder. He knows how to do it the right way, but I'm with you. It all started with a good pick by Polanco, not an easy play. And then Solano to center. Hit turned well. it beautiful. Ruggiano got turned. It's over his head. Off the wall. 
Darren Ruff is going to end up at second base. It didn't matter really which way Ruggiano turned. That ball was hit so hard it was going over his head. Yeah, it, it was going over his head whether he turned left or right. And that's the kind of power the Phillies like to see from Darren Ruff. And that's why they they're going to try to get him in the lineup somewhere. He provides that right-handed power. Nine home runs in the month of August. He's the 11th double this year has 14 home runs all total. Kevin friends and now has walked and flied out. Indians have stretched their lead 4 1 over the White Sox. And for the Indians that's good news because Texas has a run and is beating Houston 1 nothing in the fourth. A.J. Ramos in Miami's bullpen. Detroit has an early lead against the Twins. It could be a fun team to watch this weekend. And I'm sure Jim Leland will uh, pick his spots, giving some players a little time off. But you want to see guys like Torrey Hunter, certainly Miguel Cabrera, Prince Fielder, Omar Infante. It will be uh, fascinating to watch and see how Jim Leland treats the, the series. I think one of the misnomers is that yeah he's got to get everybody ready to, to start that week. But the American League Division Series doesn't start until the following Friday. He needs to keep guys sharp. So they're going to have it's almost like coming back from an all star break. Hand with the count two and two you saw the. The consternation. With the friends at the plate. But uh, hand has been in the zone. Two two coming. Smacked in the left field hit hard Yelich charges has it quickly rough has to stop. And Yelich hits the cutoff man. So Franzen with a hit following Ruff's double. And now up comes Galvis, and this really a, the first big threat against Brad Hand. Staying with the fastball a little bit more here in this inning, and the Phillies have caught up to it a couple of times. Yeah, the middle game, the Saturday game of that uh, final series against the Tigers. We'll get a chance to see Anibal Sanchez. He's pitching the middle game. Rick Porcello Friday night. And Justin Verlander scheduled to pitch on Sunday. And so it's not like Jim Leland's going to leave him in there for three or four innings because they've got to pitch on Tuesday or Wednesday. He's got to let them do their regular work so that they're almost on turn. And the Marlins will have Tom Kohler on Friday night, Nathan Evaldi Saturday, and Henderson Alvarez. At the corners and one out. And a two-nothing lead for Hand. And he misses away. We talked the other night about Letting a young pitcher figure out his way in a spot like this. And here's Hand trying to figure out how to get Galvis out, how to keep the Phillies off the board. If he can get a ground ball, his infield has been very good tonight. He's got good defenders out there. That fastball has been there, but if he can make a good pitch with his changeup and get Galvis leaning to roll over, hit a ground ball. Just what he'd like to see. But this is a test for him here. End of the bat, that flare is going to land in right center field. A hit. Stanton scoops it up. 
Phillies are on the board and they've got runners first and second. Still one out. Galvis with an RBI hit. And unfortunately that time for Brad Hand, he made a pretty good pitch. Down, away, off the plate. Galvis didn't hit it well, just got it off the end of the bat, but hit it well enough. Sometimes that happens in the game. You could see where pitch three was. It was out and off. And Mike Redmond's going to go get Ramos. The Phillies are pinch hitting for Cole Hamels. They've got John Mayberry Jr. up there right now. And so Ramos comes in, hand goes six and a third. He gives up the three hits and a run here, and he's responsible for the two Phillies out there right now. Metro PCS call to the pen. And he's hopeful that A.J. Ramos can clean it up here. A nice effort from hand. But the Phillies. Getting hits from Darren Ruff, Kevin Franzen, and then the flare by Galvis that knocks in a run. And so here is Ramos who's had for the most part a solid year. Well, with the change. And with extra players on his bench, Ryan Sandberg. Pinch hits for the pinch hitter. So no John Mayberry, it'll be Cody Ashey. Ashy, the young infielder. Infield looks for a ground ball. Ashy takes outside corner. It's funny when you've got two young players like this. Ashy did not like that call, but he's not been in the big leagues long enough to really lodge much of a protest. You can see him kind of cock his head a bit. A little different if you chase up. Absolutely. And he had good reason for it. You could see the pitch was out. On the other hand, you've got Ramos out there. Now, if Ramos threw a pitch that he thought was a strike that was called the ball, he probably wouldn't react like many veterans would. And AJ Ramos comes in and strikes out the pitch hitter, Cody Ashi. You love to have a guy or two in the bullpen that's a swing and miss guy. And A.J. Ramos is certainly that. For Ramos on the year now, that's strikeout number 84 in 78 and a third innings. And we've talked about his many weapons. Got Ashley with a good changeup. Now Hernandez, runner still first and second. Ramos has a, a natural run to that fastball, almost a cut fastball. But it, it comes in at 93. It, it comes in to a lefty away from a righty. 
That one is change up at 83 moves out. Yeah, which is great because he can run it in on a right and then go to the change up, which moves away. Hit in the right field, base hit, Stanton on a hot run around third, Franzen coming home, Stanton's throw home is not in time. Wow, that was close. Franzen just got through with a head first slide. Hill nearly caught him in the legs. An outstanding play by Stanton in right field. 2-2. Two -two. First of all, I didn't think Stanton had any kind of a chance because he had to move so far to his right and kind of turn and throw across his body. Secondly, Franson has pretty good speed. This was a lot closer than I thought it would be at the plate. Good effort by Giancarlo. Terrific slide by Franson, who just found the outer part of that plate. So the Phils have tied it and now they have an opportunity to take the lead. Jimmy Rollins is at the plate and yes the runners did move up. With Galvis. Now at third base and Hernandez at second. Starts to get loose. Rollins yanks it foul, and it's two and one. Off the end of his bat, and Chavaria is there, and he saves a couple of runs with a nifty play out in left center. But the Phils draw even; it's two-two. Hand now goes in the no decision column after pitching a nice ball game, but at least the Marlins on a nice play by Echeverria get out of it in a 2 2 tie. We talked earlier about the duo of Utley and Rollins. All time, yes, they're on the list. They're in the top four now. 
with Charlie Carringer and Billy Rogel in sight going into next season. But Whitaker and Trammell pace everybody for games together for the middle infielders at an amazing 1,770 games. Glenn Beckert and Don Kessinger had a nice run for the Cubs. You see Utley and Rollins are in fourth overall. Now, as for the Marlins top duo, Tommy Hutton, you are right. Second base and shortstop, number one in Marlins history, goes to Luis Gonzalez and Luis Castillo. There it is. And Alex Gonzalez. Castillo and Gonzalez, 744 games from 98 to 05. Uglin Ramirez, 703. Council and Renteria, 97-98, won 146 games. That's third most in Marlins history behind Luis Castillo and Alex Gonzalez. Guys? Nice walk down memory lane. Yeah, I actually uh, surprised with uh, Handley and with Uggs as close to Alex Gonzalez and Luis Castillo. Coy Hill fills the kind of their bullpen. And the lefty that they saw earlier in the series, Cesar Jimenez, takes over. He'll play the role of Antonio Bastardo tonight. The guy that uh, the Marlins usually saw, lefty out of the uh, Phil's pen. So this would be like at a uh, you're at the theater you're just settling into your seat and they make the announcement that the, the role of Antonio <laughs> Bastardo tonight will be played by Cesar Jimenez his understudy. Count three and two. Hot foul out of play. Houston has come back to take a three one lead over Texas. Cleveland a four two lead over the White Sox. Cleveland wins and Houston beats Texas. The Indians lead is two for that second wild card spot. That would be ball four. That's a leadoff walk to the number eight hitter, Coy Hill, who's hitting a, a buck fifty. And here comes Juan Pierre, who has been dynamite as a pinch hitter. We talked about the, the difference in Pierre as a pinch hitter as opposed to when he's been in a lineup he's 12 for 42 as a pinch hitter and in this situation up there trying to move the runner into scoring position. Yeah Bastardo still in the Phillies organization but serving a 50 game suspension for PEDs. Squares it and fouls it off. Solano and Lucas around the bed. I always feel sometimes a guy like Pierre, who is, as you see, a great bunter, whether it's for a hit. Watch well, or as a sacrifice close to a buck move by the way sometimes a guy like Pierre doesn't get a chance to swing when he's hot because he's such a good punter. I mean he's hot right now as a pinch hitter drops that butt down Ruiz makes the play and the Marlins failed to advance the runner.
Let's see if Coy Hill pauses. He paused and double clutched because the bunt was up in the air a little bit. And you're talking about a catcher who doesn't have great speed. And because of all of that, Ruiz picked that up and got the out easily at second base. And so here's Salone. You buy my line of thinking, though. I mean, a guy like Pierre, as a pinch hitter, has been spraying line drives everywhere, but he's a great bunner. So, plus you had a lefty lefty up there, and you weren't going to use Marisnik or Mathis mm -hmm. in that situation. So the the logical choice was Juan Pierre. Gotcha. Now Solano. Well, we saw the move over to first from Jimenez. Now option B would be. Have Pierre try to steal second base. Yeah, I think he may try to get himself a one way lead, which means he wants to get off far and and make Jimenez throw to first base so he can see what his move looks like. Ethan Martin. Jimenez eyes Pierre. All right now Juan Pierre seen the move a little bit. Solano waiting. On an 0 1 pitch. Just like that, it's 0 2. Certainly wants to see Pierre running. Well, JP this year, 23 steals, and with his limited playing time, leads the club in that department. That was a little quicker move. He's varied the move to first. He used a lot of uh, shoulders and knees and elbows. And head movement. This is actually kind of fun to see a veteran like Pierre trying to pick apart this move by the, the lefty Jimenez. Quick to the plate and he missed out and it's one and two and Pierre was running if he had a clean start. You now over the years there have been left handers that you know give you the different looks and some of them give it away it's almost. When they look at home, they're going to throw to first. So they try to decoy you that way. And when they're looking right at you, they go to the plate. And his move, Not to, all. His move to first is quick enough yeah. that if Pierre went on first motion, he'd probably be out at second. He doesn't have that high leg kick where he can go on first motion and put pressure on the first baseman to make a good throw to second. Not running and it's in, and it's two and two. But all of a sudden, Juan Pierre's got him thinking a little bit, and he's missed a couple of times now to the plate. Jimenez looks. And now the counts full just like that. It's three and two. After getting ahead 0 and 2 and then paying too much attention to Juan Pierre, he hasn't been able to throw a strike. Now you know Juan Pierre will be on the move. That's the beauty of having speed 
at the top of your lineup or in a in a spot like this. Dusty Baker may have that with the Billy Hamilton who's actually seen a lot of playing time lately and many feel is a good shot at making the Reds postseason roster even if it is for just one game. The Reds losing today to the Mets one to nothing. Pirates lost to the Cubs four to two. Cardinals beat the Nationals four to one. Pittsburgh three back in the Central. The Reds four back. So the Reds, I believe, are essentially eliminated from the division race. Runner goes, and it's ball four. Well, that's a good job by Donovan Solano. He got in the hole. He let uh, Wampier do a little work and distract the pitcher. And drew the walk. Duffy's deal from Duffy Sports Grill. You can catch a ride to the game for 40 bucks. Lower level ticket, round trip motor coach transportation from Duffy's and a $10 Duffy's gift card. Final Duffy's deal game of the season is coming up on Saturday, the 28th against the Tigers at 7:10. Go to Marlins.com slash Duffy's. Marlins Park tonight 2 2 fills and fish. Cesar Jimenez in relief. Cole Hamels went six innings gave up the two runs. Brad Hand went. Six and a third pickoff play he's safe. Wow. Wow. Looked like he was picked off. Rollins well, can't believe it. Dale Scott isn't buying. Here comes Sandberg. Boy I think the Phillies have a little bit of a beef. That's a quick move. And, and Jimmy Rollins gets the tag on Juan Pierre before he ever gets to the bag. And that's why he's got a pretty good argument. He's not going to win it. And Pierre watch his hand. He got caught right in Rollins foot. Yeah. And it never got to the bag. It's a it's a great play by Rollins. An athletic play to make that catch and tag. Rollins can't believe it. So you can read his lips. He was, he was never on the bag. He was never on the bag. Well, it was executed perfectly by Jimenez, and as you pointed out, Rollins, a super job of making the catch and the tag. A real break for Miami. Ed Lucas has doubled in three trips. Behind the runner. Well, that's a risky play. You don't have an experienced first baseman there in Franzen. And if the ball gets by him, you've got Pierre with a chance to go all the way from second to home. Well, yeah, a chance he throw not only because of Franzen, because you also have an experienced runner in Juan Pierre at second base. Lucas fouls it back. Had a good rip on a 2 0 pitch. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Todd Helton on his <laughs> on his final game at Coors Field with the entire house on their feet. His former college football teammate Peyton Manning in the house just went deep. Incredible. What a moment. And the place is falling apart in Denver. He ought to just walk off the field now.
And in the meantime, good battle going on here. Lucas swings, misses. Count evens at two and two. Helton had his daughter throw out the first pitch. The place is absolutely jammed. And Coors Field is one of the bigger ballparks in baseball. They got him packed into the rock pile there. Of course, Helton was the starting quarterback at Tennessee when Peyton Manning came to campus and eventually took his job. And Helton would go on to star in the big leagues for many years. That home run. Coming against Jake Peavy, Boston still leads that game 3 1 in the second. Here, 2 2, Lucas battling Jimenez, who's thrown a whopping 20 pitches already in the seventh. Lucas, a smash, Franz, and it's on the ground. He trapped it. No one's at first. And so Rollins can't fire to get a double play, but Lucas really scorched it. At the corners now for Yelich. And there's two outs. Yeah, you can't hit a ball any harder. And Ed Lucas doing what he does so well, sending balls the other way, and he hits that one hard, short hop by Franson. Unfortunately, he's out. Fielder's choice. He reaches base. Franson made a good play. And now the Phillies get the matchup that they want. They got the left hander facing the left hander, Christian Yelich. Yelich 0 for 2. That's a play if Pierre is on his toes and he sees Jimenez go to first. If he gets a good jump, he's got a shot at swiping home. Count to and one. Little tap up the line. Franzen shovels. He's out. Got him. Yelich is out. Did he tag him with the glove or did he tag him with his hand? It almost looked like he caught the ball with his glove but put the hand out. Remember the Marlins got a real break when Pierre was called safe at second. Let's look at this one. Where's the ball? Oh my goodness. How do you miss that? It, you you got to tag him with the ball. No no C.B. Buckner no. I'm not even sure if he tagged him with the hand. No no. <laughs> no no. Not.
Marlins Baseball está disponible en español vía SAP y es presentado por Hialeah Park Casino. Abierto ahora. 2-2. In the eighth, there were two calls in that inning that uh, both umpires, C.B. Buckner and Dale Scott, missed. Now, umpiring is not easy, and bang bang plays happen. The play at second with Pierre trying to get back. Rollins uh, appeared uh, pretty clearly to tag him, and Pierre's hand got caught on Rollins' foot and never got to the bag. And then that last play at, at first base from C.B. Buckner's angle, maybe he didn't see that the ball or the glove never made contact, but clearly from our view and from just about everybody else's view. Watch Jimenez. Now this is kind of the view. I still don't know how you can miss that call. Yeah, because the glove never gets to the body, but the bottom line, the Marlins in that inning got a call and they got robbed of a call. And now it's up to Mike Dunn to keep it a 2-2 game. And so you, you win one and you lose one. I'll tell you the other bottom line. Now in this series, the Marlins are three for 31 with runners in scoring position. Dunn is in, Utley's up, Ruiz and Brown will follow. Are you ready for the breakdown, Rich? Uh, get prepared. Utley. It's Ruggiano who's there. He makes the catch. First game of the series, two for 13 runners in scoring position. Last night, 0 for 7. Tonight, 1 for 11. And kind of a microcosm of the season. Chad Qualls getting ready. Carlos Ruiz is coming up. Dominic Brown behind him. Houston's lead against Texas has melted pretty quickly. Ron Washington's ball club up, up now. Six to three in the fourth. Chivaria. And just for that, he gets our course like cold, hard fact. Fewest errors since the All Star break in the National League. The Marlins just 29. We've talked all year about the improvement defensively for the fish. Echeverria, a big reason why. Polanco at third, a big reason why. Improved play by Solano has been huge. Some good outfield play as well. I think we've talked about that. I think we've we've seen that. The improved defense. Brown sends one in the center on a hop for Ruggiano. Base hit for Dominic Brown, a two out single. Here in the eighth for the Phils. Poll results ATT U verse. Should Etch be considered for a gold glove? Sure, he should. He should. And I like the way they do it now with the gold gloves. Last couple of years, they've announced finalists. So you find out who the guys were that uh, were considered and got the most votes that didn't win it. I wouldn't be surprised if Echeverria is a Gold Glove finalist. You would like to see him in that group, yes. Well, Mike Dunn gives up the hit to Dominic Brown. Darren Ruff is coming up, and I think Metro PCS is going to get some love here. Tommy Hutton. So is Chad Qualls.
Yeah, well, we'll let you see how it got to 2 2. Ruggiano with a walk. Good play by Rollins, an infield base hit, though. That keeps the inning alive. So Placido Polanco with that infield hit. How about a triple off the bat of Adani Echeverria? His eighth triple of the year. Two runs come in. Marlins have a 2 0 lead. Brad Hand was throwing the ball well, but the Phillies just keep fighting back. Base hit by Freddie Galvis makes it a 2 1 game. And this base hit, good effort by John Carlo, but a terrific slide. And just like that, the Phillies tied it up 2 2. Mike Dunn is gone. Chad Qualls is in. And here we go. Qualls takes over. Browns at first. Darren Ruff is up. Phillies bats have come to life here in the last two innings. They banged out four hits and getting their two runs in the seventh. Have a hit here in the eighth. Had just four hits going into that seventh inning. He does have eight stolen bases. He's eight out of 11 this year. He does not have his base dealing certificate. Not a certified base dealer. Not of the uh, Jimmy Rollins level. Or Jason Worth when he was a, a Phil. And of course, with the, the managerial change, some coaching changes. So Wally Joyner is the uh, first base coach now for the Phils. Wants Sam well over at third. Much better base stealer than Wally Joyner. Oftentimes you see that teams uh, oftentimes have uh, a coach that was a good base stealer and more times than not he's coaching first base. In this case you really don't have that. I would actually I don't think I really like to see a race between Wally Joyner and Perry Hill. Oh what is it San Diego has uh, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts. Tom Goodwin, the Mets. That Brett Butler type guy is always uh, seems to be coaching at first base. Of course, Davey Lopes for a while was with the Phillies and he did wonders with the Phillies running game, especially in their World Championship year and their two World Series years. He's now in Los Angeles, back in Dodger Blue. That one comes in and Falls comes out of the pen and walks rough. Kevin Franzen now. This game really motored because both Brad Hand and Cole Hamels knew what they were doing and were out there working quickly. But with base runners and the bullpen, things have slowed down.
That one just uh, hopping over the head. Of Juan Samuel. And we talked about the, the Marlins with runners in scoring position tonight. The Phillies are three for seven. To left, Yelich is there, and he makes the catch. Right. Balls works out of the eight. Two-two. If you want to order food directly from your smartphone, upgrade your seats for today's game instantly for the palm of your hand. You better do it quickly. It's in the eighth inning. Download the MLB.com at the Ballpark Mobile app for these features and more. And you can check in through the app to earn free tickets. Download the free MLB.com at the Ballpark app today. Ethan Martin out of Philadelphia's bullpen. John Carlos Stanton. Bends away from a big breaking ball. Stan Ruggiano Polanco. Marlins looking for a run here in the eighth, trying to break a 2 2 tie. Broken back. And Rollins throws Stanton out. In a tough series for John Carlo. One for ten in this series so far against the Phillies. And a few broken bats. Max Scherzer is on the mound for the Tigers tonight. Marlins will see him, but uh, not pitching. They'll see him standing in the dugout. Yeah, I think he'll be all indication that points to Scherzer being their starter in the first game of their postseason. And so the Tigers are probably going to have Scherzer. Whether it's Sunday or Monday, throw some. I mean, he's gonna be. I mean, because this is if if he doesn't throw much, just a long time. It is a long starts. time. So they're gonna have to have some sort of a simulated game. Because they, as we noted, the American League Division Series don't start till the week from Friday. So I imagine it'll be Scherzer, Verlander, and Anibal Sanchez. You know, the other wrinkle is that the wild card games are on different days. Wild card game on a Tuesday, wild card game on a Wednesday. Ruggiano walks a one out walk. A 
they have feeling because we've seen Ruggiano steal some bases this year. Justin Ruggiano has 15 steals. He's been caught eight times, but you know he's going to be thinking about it here. Martin to the plate, fastball strike. Polanco has two hits, an infield hit and a double. He had a good throwing catcher behind the plate in Ruiz. He's out in front of Polanco, 0 and 2. Few other things to look for in this final weekend of the season. That's the batting race in the National League. Michael Kadire is 0 for 1 in his ball game. He's kind of opened things up a little bit in that race. With his 0 for, he's hitting 335 right now. And the Braves didn't get a whole lot because Kyle Loesch in that. Uh, Game against Milwaukee, Loesch pitched a two hit shutout against Atlanta. Polanco in the right field, base hit, Ruggiano around second, on his way to third, rough with the throw, it's cut. Nicely done at the corners with an out. Ah, what a nice night for Placido Polanco, hit number three on the evening. And some great swings, great approach by Polanco. By sending it in that direction, it, it allowed Ruggiano to get to third base easily. Great job. His infield base hit in the second inning was big in that inning where the Marlins scored two as well. And Chris Johnson's 0 for 3, or he went 0 for 3, so he's down to 325. Middle infield is halfway. Rollins and Utley creeping in a bit. Martin misses. Echeverria drove in both Miami runs in the second with a triple. This is where, if you're Echeverria, don't get too anxious. The guy on the mound, he's the one that's in trouble right now. In the dirt, Ruiz smothers it. And I think that's part of the reason he's he's hit into 18 double plays. Because he gets a little anxious in these situations and he hits the pitcher's pitch as opposed to his pitch. And you can see this is a, a telltale sign of that. It's 9 of 21. Etch chopper over the middle, Rollins to the plate, and safe. The ball pops out of Ruiz's glove. He doesn't see it. Runners advance. And Miami has the lead. Tremendously difficult play for Jimmy Rollins. He tried to get it to the plate. I'm not sure Ruiz ever really had the ball. High chopper. This was going to be a tough play no matter how you looked at it. He never really had it. He tried to catch and sweep tag before he really had it. So Ruiz on that throw which was on the other side. It's a tough error. It's going to be an error. Fielder's choice. An RBI and an error charge to Jimmy Rollins. And the error allows Echeria to go from first to second. Infield in now. And Coy Hill is up. So Echeveria has driven in all three runs tonight. So he's had a nice night. Polanco's had a terrific night.
Hill takes in. Steve C. Shaq getting ready. Miami has that lead. But they'd like to tack on a couple more. Blanco's 90 feet away. Echeverria out at second. Dobbs waits on deck. High fastball. One and two. Troy Hill tonight has bounced out, lined out, walked. Swing and a miss at a high fastball. 96 miles an hour. Hill fails to drive in the run. So Greg Dobbs gets the at bat and he's here with two outs. Solano is on deck. Dobbs takes away. Doesn't look like Martin is all that interested in, in throwing anything over the middle of the plate for Dobbs, the right hander on deck. At least he hasn't in his first two pitches. We'll see where his thinking goes on this pitch. Well, there's there's your indication. Trots down first. Utley in for a conference. Well, Solano, really, if you're the Marlins, would be one of the first guys you would pick in this spot. Bags loaded, two outs. See his career average with the bases loaded. His batting average with runners in scoring position and two outs is even. Better than uh, just the overall average with runners in scoring position. Well, the bottom line is the numbers point to a base hit right here. Bases loaded situations, runners in scoring position with two out. Martin bounces one in the dirt. Ball and a strike. Polanco. And Chaburia. Dobbs. There's no question, Rich. It's painfully frustrating watching the Marlins try to score runs. And in this case, trying to add on.
And it's been that way all year. Well as I said last night. During our, our segment on the postgame show painful to get to 100 losses. The hope is is that through the pain you get some gain next year. Whether it's but in order to get that game you've got to add something. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a one two. Solano swings and misses. The Marlins do get a run and Steve Ciszek does have a chance to save it. Checkers, Greg Minervini, Jeff Conine saddling up, getting ready to go out in center field as the fish try to win this series. To do that, they're going to need Steve Ciszek to keep that that run on right now. 27 in a row for Ciszek. It's tied with Todd Jones. And it's the longest active streak. In the big leagues. Just one run in his last 18 appearances. And 32 saves in 34 chances. So those are the numbers. He does have just a one run lead to protect Freddie Galvis. Roger Bernardina is on deck. Then Cesar Hernandez. So Cishek goes to work in the ninth. Galvis butts. It's a good one. Polanco better hurry, and he has to eat it. And the Phillies have a start here in the ninth. Well, a great putt by Freddie Galvis to get things started for the Phillies. No chance at all for Polanco. Polanco even with the bag, but just dropped up that third base side. Beautifully. Galvis with a three hit night. So Bernardina swings and misses. So Ciszek is going to see a slew of left handed bats between switch hitters and and left hand about Bernardina, then it's back to the switch hitter Hernandez, switch hitter Rollins, and then up if it gets that far. Check swing on an 0 1. Quickly it's 0 2. Cleveland pulling away from the White Sox 7 to 2 in the bottom of the eighth inning. Texas pulling away from Houston seven to three if those scores hold still a one game lead for the Indians for that second wild card spot. 
the Rays are taking care of business in New York. Seven to two. A story where the Mariano Rivera bobbleheads arrived late to uh, Yankee Stadium. Train problems, delivery problems. Did they enter to uh, Metallica? They should have. Fans got vouchers instead. Yeah, fans got upset. Struck him out. Backdoor breaking ball, which actually came in the front door, it looked like. And I think what happened, he had Bernardino looking on the outer part. And that ball, he's looking out there. The ball comes in. And it's a strike. You know, Bernardino's questioning that, but that's a that's well into the zone. That's a that's a great pitch. Cesar Hernandez. Tried the back door with that one. It's out. And it's two and oh. Tying runs at first. In the air. Foul territory. Yelich almost overran it. Makes the catch. Boy, he had a long way to go. That ball was up there for a long time. And you have to keep your concentration that whole way and make sure you don't uh, overrun it. Echeverria was coming after it, but it's an easier play for Yelich who took charge. It's always tough as an outfielder on balls like that to keep the ball from bouncing in your vision. Because as you're starting to bounce, your head's starting to move. Yeah, if you're running on your heels, you're going to get in trouble. Now Rollins with two outs. Cishek trying to run his save streak to 28. Gets a strike 0 and 1. Ball and a strike and two outs. Rollins has been hot. Marlon saw that in Philly. No, no hits in this ball game, and he goes after a fastball that was tailing up and out, and that's really tough on a lefty to catch up to. Especially when you know and you've seen Cishek come down and in with that good breaking ball. Two two coming. And he got him. Ball game. Cishek has saved 28 straight. The Marlins push across a late run and take the series from the Phillies. Beat him here tonight. Three to two. Nice work by the bullpen. Terrific start by Brad Hand. And a very nice night offensively for a Danny Echeverria who knocks in all three runs.